Hi guys, so I only played Kill Team a few times before Into the Dark came out and obviously I love the fact that this is like the Space Hulk Gallo Dark is just amazing. Uh, the only problem I don't like with the, uh, the Into the Dark one by Warhammer is all the walls are the same. Uh, even the new box sets, they're still obviously more box sets of the same sort of terrain. So as you can see here, this is a 3D printed one I did ages ago. There's a video of me showing how I made this one as it obviously does contain the, uh, the dice sort of uh, and the counters over there and also printed up some cards because well I have a memory like a sieve so yeah I've got a variety of cards let me know what each of the operatives do uh, but yeah so as it's meant maybe say the Gallo Dark this is going to be made up of like hundreds or thousands of ships merged together uh, which is why obviously I had to go sort of <laughs> gluing over some of mine just to make them look a little bit different obviously yeah it kind of works but it's a bit of a bodge job so what I really need is more different varieties of uh, 3D sort of terrain to print out. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. Uh, but I've also got a new printer. I've got the Anycubic X2 here. A uh, lovely little thing. And just like the, the previous um, the Mono one, which I've been using for, well, nearly two years, I think, it's got a lovely large build plate. And uh, this is obviously awesome because it means you can get tons of miniatures on here, print them out, and it doesn't take any longer than it would sort of print out one or two, which is just awesome. Um, yeah, similar size to the other one, not quite as tall. So I'm also using some new resin for this as well. I've got this resin from 3D Jake. Uh, I've got a couple of resins from them. This is the standard one. I've got a harder one which I'll be using in a different video. So uh, yeah, go check these guys out. There are links in the description to the Anycubic um, Photon Mono X2 as well as 3D Jake here. So obviously I've got my printer, I've got my resin. Now what I need is some 3D files. And I was luckily contacted by someone um, who's making some Kill Team, well, a variety of sort of Space Hulk looking files and it's this kickstarter uh the space dwarf colony and spaceship uh, and as you can see the whole variety of stuff here uh, but obviously this is the bit that i really like is these sort of modular terrain pieces uh, especially the infected ones that i'll be able to use in my kill team set but say they do do this whole sort of colony spaceship sort of bit um so yeah lots of lovely uh, files terrain pieces objectives all the rest of it and as it says here, do you require supports? Well, not really. And I know the bits that I printed out, I didn't do any supports. And well, you'll be able to see that in a second. I literally just had them all on the uh, the flat plate. So this Kickstarter isn't live yet, but if you go over there, uh, link in the description, guys, you'll be able to click on the notify button uh, to be notified when this Kickstarter does go live. Uh, as you'll be able to see, say there's loads and loads of variety of stuff there. I uh, love the way it all interconnects. I say very modular which obviously in this kind of game is just awesome because then you can sort of make something up for a game and then dismantle it and change it to get a whole new game the next time you play and the other great thing with all this uh, this sort of system uh, which is very handy is it all comes with a manual on how to print them and how to assemble them uh, which is really great uh, as well as some basic paint guides which is pretty awesome uh, as I like to well, I like to paint my sort of walls and stuff quite rusty which is probably what I'm going to be doing for this. So as you can see, the Mono X2, uh, yeah, big build play. I'm just chucking everything on here. No supports. Uh, these things are obviously made as well to go on um, the SLA printers. So yeah, no supports really needed. And yeah, I'm just sticking them all on here. And well, fingers crossed, all comes out. So all files on the USB, pop it in, push a couple of buttons, and yeah, away it goes. And this took, I think it was about an hour and 55 minutes-ish. So yeah, two hours later, and I had a nice sort of tray full of prints. And they all come out perfectly, which is awesome. So I want to go for a rust look on my ones. So that's why I'm using this textured um, primer. And as you can see, it's not like majorly textured, uh, but it is enough to, um, yeah, add a little bit of texture there. So all the parts printed, all the parts primed, and now we can get on with painting these. As I say, I want these to look different to the ones I've previously got. So I'm definitely going to go a rust bucket. And yeah, the thing I really love about these ones is they interlock, uh, which makes them nice and easy to put together and to obviously take apart when you want to change it up. So I love that idea. One thing I just want to mention here is I have resized these. Um, these were quite thicker and chunkier. So obviously had, I mean, they've got great detail now, but obviously they had even more detail before I kind of squished them. And the reason I squished them, uh, basically I wanted them to look a bit more like the previous ones that I've got. Um, and obviously I'm a little bit tight on the old resin, so yeah, makes it go a bit further. So yeah, I say I want to make these into a, like a rust bucket. Um, so that's why they've been obviously primed in brown, 
Now I'm going over with this kind of like orangey color. Uh, no real pattern to it. I am just sort of dabbing here and there and then trying to feather it out a little bit. So it sort of merges with the, uh, the brown that's obviously already underneath. And let's just vary it up a little bit more using some yellow. So it hasn't even dried the stuff I've done before, but obviously it is kind of like dry brushing. So it doesn't really need to dry. Plus, if anything, this obviously is good because then this will mix in with the brown. And then again, trying to get a lot of it off my brush and then just trying to feather it all in uh, into the brown that's obviously there. Um, and yeah, it looks the mess. It's, it was fun doing. But it's one of those things you sort of persevere with it, even though it does look a bit of a mess. Just keep going because when you get to the final result, it does sort of then start to take shape and look, well, look how you intended it, uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, obviously it is a case of just doing the same thing to all of them. So yeah, guys, don't forget to check out the other uh, link below to the Kickstarter. Um, as I say, I'm only using a few of the things they've got. Uh, there's probably about another 80 odd items that make up the Space Dwarf colony uh, and a spaceship that's there as well, which is pretty awesome. To so say, yeah, I'm just using the walls because, well, the walls fit in nicely with the Kill Team stuff. So again, just sort of like vary up how these things look. I'm now just slapping on a bit of a, a wash. Um, this wash basically is a combination of all kinds of washes that I've got. I've just poured them into one pot just to make it nice and easy to use. So yeah, just trying to put this in the sort of lower area bits, keeping this standing up. So if anything, it might sort of start dripping, which will obviously add to the effect of the rust, corrosion, and just dirt, grime, and all the rest of it. Uh, and there we go. Yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with how these are looking. Um, obviously, I want to make sure they, they do sort of look like they were made of metal, or there is metal underneath. So yeah, good old dry brushing. I must admit, this speed paints and dry brushing really is a game changer for me. Um, as I do enjoy, enjoy using it so much and I yeah, love the, the results that it gives me. So yeah, just trying to obviously hit all the edges just so it looks like the worn bits are possibly still sort of metal. Um, but obviously there's going to be a lot of rust over this whole thing. Um, even the texture of these, they do start feeling rusty because of that primer being, um, well, having texture. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So I obviously want these to have, or did look like they had paint on them at some stage. And I wanted to pick a colour that was obviously not sort of brown or anything like brown, so it stood out more. So that's why I've gone for this sort of bluish, well, bluish kind of green, I guess, colour. Um, and yeah, as you can see, using sort of, uh, well, it was a scouring pad, I think it was, that I'd ripped off. Um, yeah, just dabbing it here and there. Obviously, it gives you nice sort of random effects, uh, as well as lots of sort of patchy areas, uh, which is pretty cool because obviously it shows like the rust kind of coming through, well, all over. Obviously, you want some panels that look like got more painted, but well, they just keep dabbing over that uh, area. So again, this is nice and fun, uh, definitely messy, uh, but yeah, loving the result, loving how it looked. Started tying it all in a bit nicer, and yeah, certainly gives it that, uh, that rust bucket look. So this terrain really will all sort of look nice and different from all the other one I've got. Um, ideally, I want to try and get four different terrains. So one of my space uh, kill team board is made up. Uh, four sections all looking really nice and different. So now just dabbing on a little bit of brown, a little bit of dark brown there, uh, and then just going over and basically sort of colouring in a few of the items. Uh, I didn't want to colour too much in, uh, just because I didn't really want it to distract and say this is meant to look like it's old, been there for uh, hundreds of years and not used. So I think it's literally just the wires that I kind of just add a little, little bit to. And yeah, loving it. Definitely a rust bucket feel to this, which is pretty awesome. So now all the infected stuff. Um, I want to do a bright pink. Again, I want to make it sort of like stand out from everything else. Uh, but I didn't want to just paint straight over the bits as it was. So going over with some white. Um, I think it's actually an off-white I was using, just because it was, uh, well, it's one that I've never really used. So I'm going to use the off-white rather than the white. And yeah, yeah, kind of like dabbing it, because again, I want it to be irregular, have little gaps in it. Um, and yeah, it didn't have to be too neat. So, so far, guys, everything I've done, it really has, yeah, it's not been neat at all. So, nothing has been precise. It's be, really been, well, nice and messy, which is cool. Even with doing the um, the speed paint here. If I go over the edges, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just looks like a nice sort of dark area around the infected area, uh, which is pretty cool. So, this one I'm using here is a speed paint 1.0. Um, and if you've ever used it, it does sort of react when you put more speed paint over it, which you will see in a minute. But obviously, because I knew that happened, that's kind of why I did it. Um, but yeah, I say I love the look of this infected stuff. Uh, and it, it's, yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, big uh, big thumbs up to the, uh, to the chap or the company that have made this. 
Um, and yeah, so I'm definitely going to be checking out their Kickstarter once it goes live. So this is where I say doing the reactivating. I've now put in like an orange over the top. Again, just to vary up the sort of the look of it. Uh, so putting some on, dabbing it, and it's really weird. When you dab it, it almost takes off some of the original paint. So it gives you a bit more variation. So you've got some sort of pink, some orange, uh, and then a few areas that are almost not quite white, uh, but definitely a different sort of shade, which is really, really cool. And then, yeah, pretty much the last thing to do now is might as well give it some lights, even though this thing's been going for hundreds of years. Somehow the batteries, they're still working, of course. So, yeah. So with this, obviously dry brush with white, as obviously this helps the yellow go on top, and it just sort of varies the sort of shades of it as well. So where it's whiter, it'll obviously look brighter. And then as you sort of like pan outwards, it then starts getting lighter. Uh, and then, yeah, there we go. I just love it. It looks great. So obviously doing that with all of them, um, didn't take too long because obviously it was nice and easy. And then putting magnets on the bottom because my board is got magnets in it. So this means I can put everything together and things don't fall off if I pick them up and move them around, which is just awesome. And obviously it keeps everything together. So if me and my mate accidentally knock a wall, <laughs> it's not going to fall down. And yeah, say I love this fact of these things sliding in or slotting in, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, it works so well. And yeah, love it. So yeah, here's my infected walls on my Gallo Dark in um, spaceship and yeah i've got so much fun with this uh play my next game uh, well a couple of days time actually thursday so thursday i'll be playing the first game using this stuff and yeah it's um, it's a great way of varying up the board looks great different sort of uh pieces and the other thing i really like with this set the doors um yeah i didn't mention it before but the doors they, they, they slide up absolutely love this idea uh it's funny enough in the last game we mate had a few um well, but I do love the fact that the doors open normally in the other sort of sets, but sometimes this can cause problems when you've got an operative standing behind it. So a door that slides up and down and removes means there's no problems with hitting someone, and yeah, it works really, really well. So love that idea, sliding up doors. And there you go, yeah, it's looking awesome. I yeah, think it's great, and I can't wait to uh, play the game. So yeah, the dwarf door, uh, Space Dwarf Colony and Spaceship even, so I say that three times. Um, yeah, go along, check it out. So Kickstarter starting very soon. So click the notify button and you won't miss it. And I'm certainly going to have fun playing this uh, with my mate. So yeah, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought about this little set. Um, so I'm looking for some more Into the Dark sets because say, I want my board to have four different types and I would love one of them to be like a nice, clean, fresh sort of Star Wars looking one. That would, uh, that would be awesome. So yeah, this is infected one, and well, as you can see, yeah, it's amazing. And I'm really pleased with how my quick paint job came. Um, yeah, good old rust. <laughs> Anyone can do it. Just want to say a big thank you to any Cubic and their Photon Mono X2. Um, awesome printer. Link in the description to that, guys. As well as 3D Jake for sending me some some resin to try out. Um, yeah, resin, perfect. No issues whatsoever. I also want to thank all my patrons and Chaos Cards for helping support the channel. Link down below, guys. Get 5% off any miniatures bought with Chaos Cards. Okay, click on the video, subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Take care. See you in the next one.